only update we've got is that he you know came back from the weekend and has gotten treatment over the weekend. We'll find out a lot more today. I mean, I really, other than uh, he could jog lightly on Thursday, so we're talking about three days of recovery. We're, we're expecting him to go out there and do as much as he can. What that'll be, I'll find out today. You mentioned Jeff Collins, who's been a coordinator in the SEC for a little while now, and you know it seems like every year his defense is among the best. What stands out about a Jeff Collins defense? Well, they play really hard. I mean, I think that he does a great job of uh, selling his players on playing hard. He motivates well. Um, not a guy that does a ton of scheme stuff. He does what he does. He's got good players. And he gets them to play hard, which is a credit not only to him, but to his whole defensive staff. He was that way at Mississippi State, and he's been that way at Florida. Kirby, this uh, seems like a very complicated game from a strategy standpoint with this defense. You touched on it a little bit there, but can you talk about uh, I mean, your, your team's identity? The, the thought is, do you run it, do you pass it? But these guys have been really good against the pass. Yeah. Um, is, is that where the dilemma is, or do you just you, know, you try to do what you do and, and be balanced like you try to do every week? Yeah, I think you have to start with balance. I think that every defense is going to take away what you do best. So you can't let them do that. You know, you've got to be able to make some plays. I mean, they're good in the pass defense because they've got really good DBs. They've got, you know, two corners that you could argue are probably the best tandem in the country. They get out there and press you, get their hands on you. Um, not a lot of elaborate schemes. They just go out there and cover you and, and whip you up front physically. And they've got good players doing it. So you know, it's a credit to those guys. I think for us, we've got to be able to hit some plays in it, which a lot of teams haven't been able to do. We've got to be able to run the ball. If you run the ball, then you create situations where they have to put extra guys in the box. But it's no different than any game, blocking, tackling, breaking tackles. We're going to have some one-on-one -on -one tackles. And our backs beat their one-on-one -on -one tackles. And that's that's what really what it boils down for our offense against their defense. And it'll be interesting to see how they play us in some, some personnel groupings. It'll be interesting to see how they play us, you know, outside. Do they have respect for our receivers? I don't know. They don't, you know, they don't use it. They just let their guys go play on an island. And uh, we'll see if they continue to do that. Hey, Coach, do you feel like you guys got everything accomplished that you wanted to in this bye week? I'll answer that question Saturday because <laughs> I certainly think we worked towards it. Um, I thought that we got to attack some areas we needed. And I really thought the kids had good energy and good attitude to go out and practice um, the way they did, physical, hitting each other with toughness. And that's a thanks a lot to the leadership of the team to making the guys do that. Because when they sell it, the other guys buy into it. So. I do think that a lot of teams deteriorate as the year goes on from a tackling standpoint. They hit less, they tackle less, they get beat up, and you see it showing up on these Saturday games with missed tackles. And um, that's Achilles' heel of ours. We can't have the missed tackles. We've got to tackle well. So we worked hard on that in the kicking game. Kirby, you know, there are two, two questions. One is um, uh, regarding Patrick and Smith, uh, the two players who declared you don't have a statement in here. So I was wondering if you could just address that real quick. And then looping back to something that I think probably was brought up from the time really you were hired, Georgia has one of the one of the tougher um, drug testing situations with student athletes in the country, really. What your view is on that and addressing any perceptions that that a football coach might exert on a department in terms of decisions in these kind of situations? Yeah, I'll start with the first. Um, you got the statements from uh, Roquan and uh, Nathrez and from the university. I think that uh, we brought the matter to a conclusion today, and um, I'm happy for these two young men. They get to move on to football and uh, not have to deal with distraction. I will say that on the field, both these two young men have been exemplary and leaders, especially for sophomores. You know, I, I think I've mentioned before that, that Nate Trez and Roquan have just started to kind of be vocal maybe since the Ole Miss game, which is tough when you're a sophomore because you're in the bottom half of the leadership, you know. And those kids have, have done that, and they've done a good job of being leaders. As far as I'm a team player when it comes to policy, and uh, I believe in doing what the, the, the team theme is, which is what our athletic association has been so far. Do I think that we live in a society that's a little bit different now than it was back when? Ever? Sure, I do. But uh, I also believe in what we have, and we know and accept the rules that we've been charged with. Coach, what kind of advantages does your familiarity and history with McElwain and Westmeyer working together at Alabama, what kind of advantage does that provide for you? I don't know that it does provide advantage because for every advantage I might have, 
they have the same. I think you can overthink these things. It's getting to be a recurring thing because, you know, you know much champ, you know, the uh, same deal there, you know this guy, you worked with him before. I, I just don't think there's advantages when it comes to that. I think the, the biggest deal is your coach players against his coach players, and you try to put them in the best chance to be successful. They do a lot offensively. They do a great job of motioning, shifting you, trying to confuse you. You know, we, we played them last year at Alabama, and we also, you know, Chris Brewer played them here at Georgia. So when you look at it, they did a lot of the similar things, shifting motion, trying to confuse people with eye candy. I think that's what, you know, Nuss and McElwain have always done. The biggest difference is they got a big physical line, and they've got backs now that are running the ball better. They got four backs that are really running the ball well to create balance. And they've got the young wideouts out there playing really well too. So I think Luke uh, Del Rio throws a great deep ball and uh, they've done a great job with their offense.